This podcast is brought to you by Cine.nl. This must you see. Will you please listen up to what I have to say? Because we're in for some old-fashioned wrestling today. Not the vile and oily opposer each kind, but the kind that involves in the thumbs you will find. Because it's thumb wrestling time. Yes, it's thumb wrestling time. Yes, it's thumb wrestling time. So we will discuss pros and cons, faults and pluses of all your favorite movies. And we will ponder the merits of cinema in this WrestleMania. Hello, pot people! Wow! That is from Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Welcome to a brand new episode of Thumb Wrestling, the podcast wherein I, Ruud Vos, will be hashing it out with a brand new podcast because we disagree about a certain film. And you are hearing correctly. After a gap of six Dutch episodes, we're finally back with an English language one. The next one will be sooner, I promise. I've already recorded, so I can make good on that promise. Anyway, this is episode paragraph 78. And it's the first one in which I speak with someone about a Spanish language movie. Namely, Volver by Pedro Almodovar. I'm not sure I did the V pronunciation correctly there, but then again, I'm not Spanish. So please forgive me. It's a story about two sisters, Raimunda, played by Penelope Cruz, and Sole, played by Lola Dueñas, and about Raimunda's daughter, Paula. Now, when Paco, who is Paula's stepdaddy, um, reveals himself to be not her real dad and starts trying to seduce her, well, rape her, really. She murders him. Rai Munda finds out and helps her take care of the body. She hides it in a empty restaurant next door. And then she starts, well, running that restaurant and serving food to a film crew. In the meanwhile, the sister, Sole, has to take care of the remains of their aunt who has died and finds that the ghost of their mother, Irene, is roaming around the house of their dead aunt, and she takes her home accidentally. And once her mom is there, she hides her. A lot of smaller stuff happens until, in the end, Raimunda finds out that her mom, as a ghost, is living at her sister's place. They talk, mom explains that she's not really a ghost, but that she killed her husband, and also her husband's lover, who is the mother of a a common friend of theirs. And also it turns out that um, Raimunda's father raped her, so Paula's grandfather is also her father. But as a way to make good for her mistakes, uh, Grandma Irene goes and takes care of that friend of Raimunda and uh, Sole's, who has cancer, and so she can sort of atone for all the things she's done wrong. And they all sort of live happily ever after, except for Paco, who was murdered. But who cares, because he was trying to rape his stepdaughter. Okay, the end. All right, that was a long summary, but uh, yeah, I think I managed. So my guest this week is half Spanish herself. It is Rosanna Jimenez, better known in the Dutch comedy scene as Roxy JC. She is a comedian and also a comedy organizer for that comedy thing. And she's also a graphic designer. She uh, makes promotion material for comedy shows. I especially like the one she made for Conilingus where she managed to make a drawing of the Virgin Mary look like a vagina. It is really cool. I'll put a link in the description. And Roxy is also a podcaster together with Franco Ackerlund. She makes the show Los Mongrels. Again, link in the description. Roxy welcomed me in her home on Sunday the 17th of October, and that is in Amsterdam. So sometimes you will hear some trams driving by, which in podcasting terms we call local charm. Please enjoy that charm. 
Anyway, let's head over to the conversation with Roxy JC about Volbert. But first, this. Show me the money. Hey, do you like this podcast? Well, this podcast likes you too. Just for listening to it. Even if you're a casual listener. But if you like to be liked, you can be liked even more by donating a small monthly sum of money to us on Patreon. And if you do, you get rewards to show you how much we like you. What am I saying? How much we love you. So visit patreon.com slash and get even more warm feelings. And even if you don't, no worries. Thank you simply for listening. Three, two, one, five. Oh, wait, I'm giving the thumbs down. But yeah. I changed my mind on it. It doesn't matter. Sorry? <laughs> I changed my mind on it when I watched it. But I can I can destroy it anyway. We can <laughs> we can navigate through both. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I can, exactly. I can tell you why I hated it and why yeah. I love it now. Yeah. There but you, you still have a general dislike of Almodovar. <laughs> That's I watched it a month ago, so I hope I remember the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's just dig into your opening statement. Let's set the mood. So yeah, what 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 what, what is uh, Volver? 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 Yeah, Volver. Volver. Um, what is it to you? Well, it's a complicated one there. As as I told you the first time I, I we talked about it, yeah. I remembered hated it, hating it completely. I was still living in Spain, uh, and I thought it was just a exaggerated version of what our culture was, uh, and I just thought it was absolute rubbish. And and then I moved here, and I lived here for I don't know ten years. Yeah. I don't know when the movie came out, and then I recently rewatched. So I'm like, oh, it's actually quite accurate. <laughs> 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 so I don't know what's happened to me in these ten years if I've become detached from. Spanish culture or not? But it's become that yeah. big of a parody in your head. That I think so. <laughs> yeah, I think I expect everybody to just start dancing flamenco in front of me. Um, <laughs> but what I do remember that I did like was like the very strong bond between women that is actually very very real in Spain. Like mm -hmm. there's a massive sisterhood, and it's very like um, uh, matriarchal uh, uh, community. Even though like men. Is still quite misogynistic in certain ways. Yeah. Women still lead. You know, grandmothers, mothers decide what's going to happen in the kitchen more than anyone else. And then oh, they yeah. might guide the men towards what they think is what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But yeah, definitely decisions made in the kitchen in Spain. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I, I watched an interview with uh, Almodovar after I watched the movie mm -hmm. this time about the movie and about how he, how personal it is for him mm -hmm. and he really digs into this because he grew up in La Mancha mm -hmm. where men were very much absent and he just grew up along women and this is his way of yeah. just I wouldn't say maybe thanking them but just to to pay pay homage to them yeah and I was I grew up in La Mancha uh, I was born in La Mancha in Talavera okay. my father's from next to Toledo yeah and the houses are similar they're very these big patios and these big entrances very cavernous And yeah, men are normally in the country or they're in the bar or they're working. Yeah. And the house is always full of mothers, daughters, uh, nephews, neighbors, everybody. In my village, they would uh, they would sew. They would sit together in a circle and sew. Yeah. Um, it's a very famous place for, for um, sewing. And, and that's where they say they cortar trajes, yeah. which means to cut um, clothing, yeah. which basically means criticize everybody. <laughs> 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 Whatever's happened in the village, you'll find out there. That's the place to go. <laughs> I can also congratulate you on your choice of clothing for this podcast because you're wearing something that's really bright red, which seems like really Amadoba. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was wearing a Nirvana jumper and then I decided to change. It it's going to pop fitting. out. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm going to make sure that the uh, saturation for the picture is uh, out. <laughs> Even if it. only for the sweater. Yeah, that's literally what I think about Amadoba's movies. Yeah. That they're a saturated version of, of Spain. Yeah. It's just that going on Photoshop and just putting the contrast up. Mm -hmm. But you also, you, you mostly have a dislike of his work. I, I do, but I am finding myself liking it more. So okay. since all well I've decided I'm going to rewatch a lot of things yeah. that I hated when I was 20, yeah. when I lived there, and that I feel like I'm enjoying now that I'm 
I'm a half a foreigner again. I mean, I was always a bit of a foreigner. My mum's from the UK. Yeah. So I always did look at Spain from the outside. Yeah. Maybe that's why I tried harder to be Spanish. But I don't know. Now it seems like I'm liking it. I mean, maybe I'm just becoming a softie in my old age. <laughs> but do, do you know how he's received in Spain? Is he celebrated? As yes, much as definitely. Outside? Yeah. I, I think the thing in Spain is that you're not celebrated until you become a little bit more famous elsewhere. Right. So now that he's Hollywood famous, yeah. people love him. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> But in, uh, I remember before, it was also very very sexual, very... Uh, there was a lot of trans people in his movies as well. Yeah. So it, it was difficult. It was the 80s and the 90s as well. People were still When it wasn't across. what it is now. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It used to be very different movies. Um It was a little bit, you know, dangerous to watch his movies as well. Or like, right. as a kid, I don't remember them being on TV very early. They were always on at two or three a.m. Right. So, because they were a bit saucy before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pornography. Yeah, basically, but yeah. Spanish TV has got a lot of tits in it. <laughs> We came out of a Franco era, and everybody got very excited. <laughs> Uh, he died in 79. 79, right. And that's so when I started in the 80s. At first, I think he wasn't a drag queen, but he was involved in like the music scene, the uh, war makeup. Yeah. Um, I think he was in, involved in punk. I can't remember. Right. And then he started making these like movies about his life in Madrid. Yeah. So it's what he's doing now is more his life as a child. I think he's talking about his background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially his recent ones, yeah. Yeah, the last one I know is just mothers, literally. Yeah, it's just exactly. Called, Yeah. My mother, or it's about to be mother. released here in the uh, Netherlands. Ooh, I know that uh, Penelope Cruz will Prada for the um, opening. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm very into this. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking forward to seeing it here. Um, I am. I actually, I because we said I was going to be the thumbs down for the movie. Yeah, but I am excited to see one of his movies outside of Spain. And see how I perceive it now. Yeah. Yeah. When I saw this movie for the first time. Also, I think I was trying a little too hard to be maybe uh, different or a goth or something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was like, ah. When well, you saw it when you were 20. Yeah, so in my 20s, I was trying to be indie pop then. So I was like, bah, this is just, you know, the same old rubbish that I see everywhere in the streets. Yeah. So that's another thing. It's the same as if you watch a Dutch movie. And it's about like the streets of your city mm. doing things that you see every day. Like, there's nothing special about it. Yeah. But for Or you just see all the things here, that are wrong with it. As well. You're like, we wouldn't wear that. Yeah. Or like I saw a movie that was uh, based between Madrid and Amsterdam. Yeah. And they went to a bar in Amsterdam and they ordered food. And I know that bar doesn't do food. And it made me very angry. <laughs> and why? It doesn't matter. They only It was a brown bar. He just ordered some peanuts. I know that it was good for the story. It annoyed me. <laughs> I think that's probably what happened with Volver. Maybe when I watched it, I was very hyper-focused on everything. And now mm -hmm. I just forgot that could be it. And you saw it when you were still in Spain? Mm -hmm. The first time I saw it, I think I was also a little bit... Maybe I remember my aunt had seen it and she's from the small town in La Mancha. So she remembers all of that. Yeah. And I remember before I saw it, she told me it's horrible. She said, it's like being back home. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I was a little bit influenced by that as well. When I watched it and it did feel, you know, we all want to leave home and then you, you just dragged back in. Yeah. So I think. A and lot then an over exaggerated way. way, maybe a bit, at least yes. just colored yeah. in hyper stylized. Yeah, of course, they're not going to be the same as in real life, but definitely some of the things you just cringe because they're so similar to your grand or your mum. Everybody in Spain is very much in your life. Yeah. Um, what are you eating? Have you eaten well? Uh, cut your hair, put on your shirt properly, sit up. Why are you yeah. doing that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so that's very, Nothing very... Like fuck this. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's very real. Also, just... When you're from a small town and you move to the big city, as I was in Madrid then, you also despise the village for a while. You're like, now I'm from the capital, so <laughs> everything from a small town is just stupid. I like still have a, have, a, have a complicated relationship <laughs> with the town where I grew up. Are you from a small town as well? Uh, yeah, Geemert, which is a small town in Brabant. Yep, yeah, Brabant I do. In, in my dad's village, I didn't even live there all the time and everybody knew me. Yeah. And not only that, 
I'm related to most of them. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes it's like, oh, I'm your fifth cousin once removed. I'm like, I literally don't care. <laughs> <laughs> So all the stuff about incest and stuff in uh, Bull Bear also was very familiar to you. Uh, not personally. It didn't happen within my family. Well, I mean, I think those things happen. But what's definitely... Like, my grandparents were cousins, but, like, third cousins. Yeah. That happens... That If that is considered incest, then that happens yeah. more often. But... Um, if it's between anything close, it's definitely more hush hush. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit like in the movie. Yeah. So I I don't know of anyone that's happened, but I have seen some people with uh, very close eyes and very low eyebrows <laughs> <laughs> and very small IQ. So well, you I wouldn't wonder, say. Um, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say it hasn't happened. <laughs> like they're not from the most diverse gene pool, probably. Definitely not. <laughs> My mum always says they're scraping the bottom of the barrel there. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your friends close. Put your enemies closer. One of the things that I wonder whether, which might be most easy to criticise mm-hmm. Omidoba about is that how much he likes soap operas, telenovelas, mm-hmm. and that certainly sets a certain mood and style in it. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's, that's what's very exaggerated. The thing is, in Spain, people are very loud, yeah. but normally you don't argue and you don't show off your like family secrets outside. Yeah. So doors in, you might argue, but it's always going to be quite quiet. Um, as much as people think we're very loud, <laughs> there is this sense of like windows closed, curtains closed. What happens at home happens at home. Right. Nobody knows. And outside we all smile. <laughs> um, right. I think it also comes a lot from, again, from Franco. It was 40 years where mm-hmm. your neighbors could literally tell on you for, yeah. for doing something wrong. So there's a lot of that, like, outside, I'm perfect, this is fine, we're doing the right thing, we go to church. Yeah, so <laughs> that still is a thing that people yeah. sort of live by, by custom, not necessarily by choice. Uh, yeah, that's just ingrained in the culture now. You, yeah. You're just outside more. You hardly invite people over. Like, you'll have dinners right. now more often. I think younger people are doing it more, but before it was mm-hmm. always out. You're always in the bar, you go in the morning. Yeah. You want to be seen before you wanted to be seen doing the right thing. Right. And that has now stayed in our culture a lot. Okay. Um, but yeah, these are I do, do feel like in Mediterranean areas, I do see mm-hmm. more where is, um, where people get together, they do so on squares and stuff mm-hmm. like that. That's the weather's also be, better as well. Yeah, exactly. So that also yeah. would explain it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, when I go home, I just go home to sleep mm-hmm. um, my parents live most of the time in this house in the country not a country house yeah. a house in the country I need to specify because in because English it sounds, sounds like sounds posh like, yeah exactly it's not posh it's a no. small house it's just in the woods <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I normally go and eat with them and I have dinner with them so I wake up I get ready I go out for beers with my friends at yeah. some point my dad picks me up I have lunch I'll have a nap and I do have a nap when I'm there on holiday mm-hmm. I have a siesta. I'm not ashamed. <laughs> it's the best thing in the world All right. to do after a few glasses of wine. You, you, you yeah. haven't brought your siesta in uh, back? No, I can't sleep here. There's no point. <laughs> I'm not drunk during the day. Yeah. Uh, and then I just, I'm out again. I'll go for a coffee. I'll have dinner and I'm out. You're out again because it's just nice weather. Yeah. The other day we were just sitting outside until 4am. Mm-hmm. Not even getting completely drunk, just sitting and chatting just because it's it's great weather and it is an outside life yeah yeah if I invite my friends over they're all like should I take my shoes off I haven't been to some of my friends houses that's that's how weird it is and a lot of houses have the sitting room for show yeah and they have the sitting room that they actually use yeah so if family and friends do come then they'll open the good sitting room exactly <laughs> yeah. the rest of the time it's yeah. just the messy one where most of the time it's in the garage <laughs> right <laughs> yeah you want, don't want to get it dirty and again it comes back to to, to showing off and to just yeah. keeping appearances, up appearances keeping yeah. up appearances and the telenovelas is also something in Spain that's just it's always been on TV so I can see why they're in his movies because I also watched them as a kid they're just yeah. They're on and they last for three and a half hours. <laughs> oh, I'm just sort of starting to sort of wonder what an episode of uh, Spanish Keeping Up Appearances would be like. <laughs> that would be pretty good, actually. <laughs> actually, there's a TV show in Bulbear, the Jerry, yeah. Jerry, Jerry-like uh, talk show. 
Oh, yeah, I forgot about that, that one. Augustina goes on. Yeah, we do have those. Um, a lot? The, the, when I was young, it was called El Diario de Patricia, which mm-hmm. was Patricia's diary. Right. And I think it was probably on for four hours. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Four hours? I don't know. It was just insane. I'm saying four. It was probably two. But it felt like so just long. Just people being exposed on television. Yeah, it was just on all the time. And another thing that, that, that is very different here is that in Spain, the TV is on everywhere. Yeah. It's on in the bar. It's on in people's houses. It's just always on. Yeah. So you just watch everything. I don't even have a TV now. Right. And then I go back and I'm distracted by the sound immediately. <laughs> But um, <laughs> yeah, you to have everything. You can have from a mum taking a daughter in because she wears black too often and she wants her to, to, you know, to dress better to the same, like, who did you get pregnant by and all yeah. this stuff. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of that. Paternity tests. Yeah, definitely. Or a lot of famous people that are... Um, Z-list, Z-listers. <laughs> They've gone off the rails, and then they have a talk about how they mm-hmm. how they're changing their lives for yeah. the better, and then they come back after three months because yeah. they're going to change their life for the better, and then they're back after six more months or not because they're going to change their life for the better. Sometimes they just come on to argue. Uh, <laughs> there's specifically one very famous woman, and she's the ex-wife of a bullfighter, right? Which is the most Spanish celebrity that you can find. <laughs> Probably. Except for flamenco singers that used to be married to Blood Bullfighters, who are also very fa- uh, famous there. Yeah. But yeah, you have a lot of that on TV. And the, now there's another TV show. Um, it's very popular. It's called um, Vice Versa. No. Tronos. I'm not sure of the name, but it's just like dudes that, are, that work out too much and women that have too much Botox. <laughs> and it's just about them going on dates. It's like Jordi Shaw, but boring because they're not in a house. They're just yeah. sitting there talking about going on dates and they'll show them on a date. Right. None of them are famous. It's like first dates, but different or? It's just first dates, but only attractive people that are way too attractive to the point where you're like, what is wrong with your eyebrows? <laughs> Like, it's not even attractive anymore, like... Yeah, uh, <laughs> they've overdone it. Yeah, yeah. like a, a very big caricature of what is mm-hmm. pretty. So I, I get why <laughs> Almodora movies are the way they are, because there is a lot of huge personalities on TV and everything, yeah. uh, and it is getting, I think it's getting worse on TV. I, think I do feel that maybe Almodora has gone off mm-hmm. that a bit. At least it, uh, he still does the, some of his mm-hmm. um, his soapiness in his movies and stuff like that 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 hasn't gone away. But mm-hmm. he isn't as interested in media culture as he used to be around this time. I think definitely, yeah, he's definitely changed. He used to be very pop culture, and he had very current people on his in his movies. Yeah, um, definitely eighties and nineties. He was very up to date. Yeah, and I think also himself, he's just given up. Because now it's just rubbish. But also in the 80s, it was just great. You know, we had this music revolution. There was all these cool mm-hmm. bands. Um, I don't know why. I'm struggling to think of Spanish names when I'm speaking in English. <laughs> 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 But um, there was Bardem. And he had his favorite actors that he always had actresses that he had in everything. But now oh, he still gone... has a couple that just show up everywhere. Yeah, definitely. But now it's just different. Now he's definitely gone back to his roots. You can feel that he's thinking more about his family. I think that's yeah. what happens when people get older and maybe grandparents start passing away. I think that's part of it, but also he's had, uh, he's tried going like full on the doba in the, the airplane movie, like fully stylized, very mm-hmm. camp, very uh, light. In which one? There is one on an airplane and I'm not sure what's called. I think it's the, the English title is I'm so excited. Can we it was to it, it was a big disappointment <laughs> for many people. Oh, that's probably why I don't know it. And then after that, he went more internal with uh, Julieta. Mm-hmm. Ah, Los Amantes Pasajeros? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I remember seeing something about this. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think for a while he also did go like to Almodovar maybe. Yeah. It's, it's very much like he's trying to go fully stylistic like uh, Wes Anderson. <laughs> Yeah, I think he also has to try new things. He had a very distinct style and he probably got bored and tried to do something different. But he hasn't lost mm. his style. He even puts mm-hmm. that in his, his works now, like Dolore Gloria, which mm-hmm. was very well received. Yeah. And then he did a short film during uh, COVID with mm-hmm. uh, Tilda Swinton. I haven't seen that one. Uh, the Human Voice. Yeah. It's been put to film before. It's like mm-hmm. a short play, uh, like one actor 
Oh, cool. There are more actors in the movie, but it can be done by one actor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like a telephone call. Yeah. I mean, I do, I do admire him. I think just growing up, he was, you know, that camp guy with the movies with a lot of uh, prostitutes and transsexuals. Mm. <laughs> and then one day suddenly it's like, why are you talking about your grandma? Yeah. That's, that's how I remember it. I know yeah. that there was, he literally changed from like parties and prostitutes to everything about my mother and, yeah. you know, tell her and everything. And it was like, yeah. what's, what's happened to you? He always does a little bit of his own story. Like yeah. it's always a, a sort of biographical. Yeah. Um, his first movies were just about that, La Movida Madrileña and being in Madrid mm -hmm. and, you know, being young and what yeah. we saw. And it's true that there was a lot of prostitution, a lot of drugs. Yeah. My mum moved to Spain in the 80s and she remembers junkies in the street, <laughs> right. uh, great parties and people were everywhere, but yeah. a lot of poor <laughs> people as well and just filth, a bit like Amsterdam used to be as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the 80s, they were probably cool, but a little yeah, bit I've, dangerous. I've seen Banjo at the beginning. One thing that I really laughed at uh, is very, very accurate. Um, is when she's walking down the street and she's bumping into all the neighbors and she's stopping to talk to everybody. Yeah, when she's yeah. trying to get ingredients for yes. the food and stuff like that. Uh, but that's true. Like, I was there this weekend and you see somebody and you say, hey, how's it going? And literally this old lady used to ask me every time she saw me, like, are you going up the hill? I'm yeah. like, yes. Yeah. Where the fuck do you think I'm going to go? <laughs> Just conversation for conversation's sake. But also yeah. at one point she says to one of the women, like, you should sell me those cakes. Yeah. And she's like, no, 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 they're for me. And then she says, oh, you shouldn't eat them. You yeah. Eat them. <laughs> and it's true because they will say that to you it's like oh since last time I saw you, you you're a bit bigger yeah. are you pregnant and it's like fuck no <laughs> it's been a pandemic <laughs> leave it off don't be so judgmental <laughs> yeah and they don't mean it in a horrible way they're just matter of fact they probably mean it in a helpful way they're just pointing out yeah. although they just want to buy your biscuits and it's an opportunistic way but still <laughs> could be as well <laughs> I don't get people trying to buy my biscuits too often <laughs> Come on, let's have biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true that you just... When I was growing up as well, I remember when I was 15 once and I bumped into some neighbours. Um, yeah. And they're like, oh, you know, you've, uh, you're, you're a teenager now. You've, you, you've grown. You did the... You know, you stretched out. Because you used to be really fat. It's <laughs> like... That was like a year ago. <laughs> yeah, you used to be like a... Like a, um, a bottle cap. You know? <laughs> like... I'm still the same person. Yeah. <laughs> One thing, mm -hmm. uh, the first time I watched this is when I got it on a DVD. My girlfriend gave it to me mm -hmm. as a present. It was when she had just introduced me to Almodovar with uh, Habla mm -hmm. con Elias, the first one I saw. Soon after that, uh, Todo Sobre Mi Madre. Yeah. Was, was it correct? Yeah, it was, was pretty good, actually. I was saying, <laughs> I, I, I was going through the words in my head and I just didn't remember the order that they were in. <laughs> <laughs> Todo sobre mi madre, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> I haven't um, seen that one either, I need to watch that. Mm. I might just do a binge of Amor today and become a fan tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> and I went on, on quite a binge of him mm -hmm. uh, back then. And um, just, I think it was about three years ago, I had to mm -hmm. do an introduction for Hable con Elia and I was just going through my head. I remember really liking it. And I remember the feeling I had when I saw it, but mm -hmm. I can't remember for the life of me what the plot of the movie was. <laughs> and then I started thinking, actually, I have that with almost all of his <laughs> movies. The only one that I still, um, mm -hmm. that is a bit more vivid because maybe it's a bit more heavy on plot points mm -hmm. is uh, Le Piel Que Habito. La Piel Que Habito, yeah. yeah. But for the rest, yeah, it's a lot of nonsense. It's less, also with Bolero. When I rewatched <laughs> yeah. it, I just didn't know what was going to happen anymore. I knew a couple yeah. of things. I knew about the shot of uh, um, Penelope Cruz on the toilet mm -hmm. because that was a thing. That was a thing in, yeah. what was it, 2008? That when it came so out, you go, oh, you're going to see her on the toilet. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're right, though. When I rewatched that, I'm like, I don't know what this movie's about. I know yeah. she's going to cook. I know she's going to sing. I knew there was something, something that else. to do with the the restaurant. But I, I didn't... I mm -hmm. knew that she was dragging stuff, but I didn't remember it being a dead body. But also, when you rewatch it, you notice the restaurant is hardly 
anything in the movie. It's yeah. it's a moment. Yeah. And I remember it being like the major plot point. Right. Yeah. And I I remembered there was a death and for some reason in my head, maybe because I watched too much thrillers, yeah. I remember I, I assumed she cooks him too. Yeah. So <laughs> then I was watching the movie, I'm like this is disappointing. <laughs> I thought she was going to make him into like croquetas or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, the cook, the thief, his wife and her lover. The yeah, you seen that? and like soy bean and yeah. in the in South Park as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all of Made those. Made you eat your man. Yeah, I love that Made one so much. It's so dark. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think South Park ruined me <laughs> in general. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't remember the big, the big shock at the end. You know, the daughter, the family, and why she left and everything. Yeah. I well, like, I, I, oh, yeah, I, remember I did now. piece together quite quickly. Not, yeah. not necessarily. Well, the the thing that I really liked on rewatching this was mm-hmm. how normal it was that she came back as a ghost, mm-hmm. and I hadn't realized anymore that just wasn't a ghost. <laughs> yes. So that's the only thing that in the end still surprised me. But just with. Um, I just very quickly made a note like why can't Irene show herself especially mm-hmm. to Raimunda and then yeah. uh, very quickly after that is grandpa also daddy mm, you knew and then I, I didn't just, get it I didn't get it at all even the second I, time you just didn't the second time I got it okay but I didn't remember that and then like when she starts hiding and I start seeing her around I'm like what the fuck is she doing <laughs> what did she do wrong? Yeah. Like, uh, I was trying to figure out what it was and why she was hiding from them. Um, you, did you know that she was a ghost or not? No, I assumed she wasn't a ghost. Okay. I was just trying to figure out why she had to hide from the kids as well. I, I, also I, I kind of would it. have liked it if she really was a ghost, but was still very corporeal. Like she still, yeah. is, she still has to sleep and she sits around watching soap operas and she... <laughs> And movies, and she's she, like a uh, ghost, but she, she hasn't learned how to be a ghost yet. Yeah, she still needs <laughs> needs to get her hair dyed yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, that that bit about the fart, I thought was pretty pretty funny. I, I remember thought the first really, time. I thought yeah. it was a really nice way to make it very very mundane about how, yes. <laughs> how she might be exposed at that moment. But that was the thing that annoyed me the first time that I watched it. Because right. I was like, oh my god, why does he have to be so disgusting? <laughs> like, can't he just talk about her perfume or something? Yeah. And now I'm like, no, obviously it's going to be farts. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's life. <laughs> that, that probably is the thing that you that is most just your mum from back then. Yeah, because no one else, anybody can wear the perfume and anybody yeah. can put on a cologne or something. But um, yeah. And also the giggle uh, when she says, like, oh, I feel like I can hear her laughing now because she's got yeah. a very special laugh. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. her sister laughs in that way as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very sweet. That, that part's very sweet. Um, but yeah, just remember that. And the toilet scene as well. I remember being annoyed the first time. I was like, oh, he always has to be so, like, gross and... Why can't she just be doing anything else? But and then by again, now, you've seen loads of art house movies and lots of people have been spent time on toilets. Yeah, but before. also another thing is that people do pee with the door open. In Spain, especially women. Like, oh. I've had that at houses because my mum's English, so the door is closed. Yeah. But I've gone to my friend's houses and they're talking to me and they just go to the toilet and they leave the door open and they continue the conversation. I can't do that. <laughs> and I can't do that either. And then I just, even growing up with it, I pretend it's okay, yeah. but I never liked it. <laughs> um, but it is, it, is it, it, is a, it is sort of a small source of bother right now in the house that when I have to go to the toilet... <laughs> I can have my girlfriend talking to me, I even if I that. sit down and I need to 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 pee. And uh, because I pro- it's a normally I just space. sit down when I I, I do pee because uh, sure easier. Uh, well, uh, yeah, exactly like that. I'm not, I'm not the best uh, marksman when it comes to that. So. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. <laughs> but whatever it is you're doing in there, it's a sacred place. Yeah, and normally um, you know. The thing is, bowels. <laughs> probably she hears me better if there's no other sound. But when, mm. but when she's talking to me, there's like a, a dialogue, like a, mm-hmm. a, a communication going on. So it also feels more like she's listening to me. She is <laughs> listening to me. I can't have this. <laughs> I do not like being spoken to in the bathroom. I don't want people no. to ask me how it went or anything. No. But yeah, yeah, I think. 
that's probably the reason why I hated it so much at the beginning because it was mm. so real. I can't, so I, can't, I, can't, I can't. I can't use a urinal. I can't use a urinal either. <laughs> so we have that in common. That's good. Common That's, ground. Yeah. That's another good. funny story about that is my Spanish friends came to the Netherlands to visit. Yeah. One of my friends is just as tall as me, which is one seventy. I'm not ashamed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm a tall woman in Spain. Uh, <laughs> and we went to the brow right tight, and he came back from mm. the bathroom, and he was very annoyed. I'm like, what's wrong? And he's like, I can't even piss in this country. <laughs> like, urinal, urinal's too high, and I had to use the uh. children's one. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, couldn't you just rest it? And he's like, that's disgusting. <laughs> what did you find? Because uh, you've been to Spain, right? Yeah. And did, did you, do you find it similar to an Almodovar movie? Because that's what I don't know. If people that watch the movies get that. Or if that's a very intimate, like personal Spanish thing. Well, I've mostly been to cities. So yeah. it's, if I would watch his older work, maybe I would see mm-hmm. some stuff in there that I would recognize. But just... Like- the prostitutes and the transsexuals. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, that's my scene. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I've seen you as a track queen. <laughs> but uh, I, I can't say that I know of that, that mm-hmm. as well as people who, who've grown up there. I have been to more southern cities like Granada, mm-hmm. which I think comes closer. Yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. But... I mostly have been to stuff like uh, Valencia. Mm-hmm. Um, I would even think that uh, not what was it near the Granada? Um, Malaga. Malaga. It's also it's it's more touristy. Yeah, yeah. At least definitely. bigger tourist tourism, more like beach tourism. Like Granada yeah. is also more cultural tourism, so that seems mm-hmm. like a different thing. Yeah, uh, there's definitely a difference there. Like beach yeah. tourism in Spain is is completely different to. To like the, the in inside, um, yeah. that's more historical and castles and old stuff. Whereas beaches is just beer and sun. Yeah, and also yeah. when I've been to South America, I've been to mm-hmm. Chile, I've been to uh, Bolivia, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, just a, uh, a bit of um, Argent- uh, Argentina. Mm-hmm. When just near, just along the side of mm. of uh, Chile. Yeah. And I would still say that all the places that I've been to are still tourism, 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 or big yeah. cities. And, it's and very then different cities as well. I do go, we do uh, like to stroll off into the areas that are less touristy. Mm-hmm. And also, when we go to a very small town which is just bombarded with tourism, we do like to stroll around mm-hmm. the areas that have less of that. But still, mm-hmm. it's been changed by that. And you don't go, to, you still don't go to a, a local bar as easily because mm-hmm. it's harder to order if you speak like Spanish. Yeah, yeah, and and the menu's not going to be translated and also you won't feel welcome. Yeah. Um, because if you did strut into a bar that's mostly locals, yeah. if it's especially, especially if it's a very touristy area, yeah. they probably won't look at you very happily. It's like, oh, no. they come and, come and ruin maybe, my Maybe if bar. you can uh, actually speak Spanish well and make contact. Yeah. If you were to go to a local bar and you spoke a bit of Spanish and you went there often, not yeah. like one day, if you went there one day and you were there for a week and every day you had your coffee there, yeah. at a certain point, they would then they would start making jokes. And especially yeah. if you got drunk at night and yeah. you got somebody a wine, then, yeah. oh, they're just, they would just love you. <laughs> <laughs> Buying affection. Yeah. Works that's, everywhere. That's what I, I found interesting because I think Bolivar is great now. Because it's like, oh, this is so so real. Yeah. But then it's like, but how, why do people like it if they don't know that this is what it's like? Or do they think, is it because they think they're seeing like inside people's houses and what it actually could be like? I do think so. Yeah. Because there, there's this, it's still very soapy, especially when it comes to story mm-hmm. uh, elements of it. It's like very highly dramatized stuff mm-hmm. in there, but still the connections. You you see a certain affection with which this is made, mm-hmm. and even when you see people get along less well with some people than with others, yeah, you still see this feels like a nugget of truth, also something that you might recognize from your own life, but then with a different taste on it. Yeah, I think, and I think that's yeah. what the appeal is for art house mm-hmm. uh, audiences around the world. And that's what he's kind of showing that at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if we're, you know, in Spain or wherever, it's still family and connection. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's true. Even though you're killing people, your still feel like fridge. shit if they have to have Christmas together. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love my family, but just for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing more pathetic than an aging hipster. Yeah, I mean, there are parts that still made me cringe uh, the second time around. Like which, which are those? The those singing, the singing. Just yeah, it's like oh fuck off. Nobody, nobody can sing like that. <laughs> no, well, no. I, I, I actually wondered, well, can Penelope Cruz sing like that? No, she no, can't. Because, I immediately uh, looked up who it yeah. was that was singing. <laughs> is uh, Estrella Morente, is she well-known? Yes, she's the daughter of a very well-known gypsy singer. Okay. And I think that's probably why it annoyed me so much, because I could tell it was... A gypsy woman singing. I could also tell sort of that it wasn't her, but I, I mm-hmm. just wasn't going to bet on it. Well, the thing is, it's great that she's singing. That would have been, I think it would have been better if they, they picked someone white and Spanish. Yeah. But um, like with everything, there's always like a lot of appropriation yeah. of the flamenco. It was a very gypsy thing to begin with. And, yeah. you know, then there's Lola Flores and other people. Mm-hmm. And then they get Penelope, which is the whitest you know, most European <laughs> Spanish person we have and suddenly yeah. she starts bowling out flamenco and is like, come on, bitch. Like, <laughs> you can't be hot, cook and sing well. Like, <laughs> and there was an element of, she's, she's telling everyone, well, I haven't sung in years. I'm yes. going to try this again. And then... Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to be any good. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, come on. Shouldn't be like this. Yeah. But I have that issue with a lot of movies where the main character's absolutely perfect at everything that they do um that's one of the reasons i stopped watching a lot of tv shows when the main character basically everybody falls in love with them everything yeah. they do they go i've never done this before and they yeah. can jet ski and yeah. they're a chef and they make sushi better than a japanese chef you know yeah the fuck off yeah like, <laughs> no you don't <laughs> pick one fucking penelope cruz <laughs> hiding dead bodies better than people who do that for a living i know and then <laughs> And then she just starts singing, like not yeah. even a little bit of stress that there's a fridge in the back with, <laughs> with a human being in it. <laughs> I, uh, th- there is an element to that mm-hmm. scene that maybe you're seeing it through the eyes of the other people there, mm-hmm. so it, is, it sounds more perfect than it really is. Could be. Could yeah. be, um, especially because you see it a lot through the eyes of a mother mm-hmm. who's hiding in the car. Yeah. So... I'm not, I'm not saying that it's mm-hmm. shown completely in that way. Because um, if I would have one criticism of... It's not really a criticism. Mm-hmm. It's more of a way of pointing at what Almodovar does in this movie, at least. Mm-hmm. And maybe also in other ones. I don't think that he puts his style very much in the ways of uh, how you make a film. Like It's not the camera work that stands out. It's not mm-hmm. the editing that stands out. He does do some things mm-hmm, with that mm-hmm. but I had sort of had to look for the more in his movies and with other ones his movies are made very straightforward but especially it's yeah. the the stories he tells the writing is uh, sort of exceptional in some points mm-hmm. and uh, the set dressing is very yeah. exceptional and then he takes really good actors and makes them act out what he wants to do so yeah I think that's his strong strong point there he yeah. he really gets the right person to embody the right character yeah and you really feel what they do there's hardly yeah. anybody doing a bit of a bad job or just a filler yeah everybody has knows who they are and what they're doing and they're dressed appropriately yeah. like the teenage girl with the phone the dress the skirt like all the clothes she's wearing yeah. and she's got that teenage kind of like not bothered feeling yeah, yeah. Exactly. he's very good at that it's true he's not tarantino he's not switching the camera around he's not moving anything no. And I would say that he has managed to turn that into a high art. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the set, so, the dressing, I think so was all, he got better and yeah. better. So that's why I became immediately reluctant when I said a criticism. No, it's really not a criticism <laughs> because he does it so well. It's just... Yeah, um, it sounds like a criticism, but it, it yeah. isn't. Because he could, if he wanted to, yeah. start shooting around and doing angles and removing the camera, but then yeah. it wouldn't feel like Almodovar. You'd be, Maybe not. You want to see like a close up and a still frame of somebody. Yeah, and he's still he's very good at, at showing what he wants to show. <laughs> His subject matter is very clear, but he also yeah. Well. Yeah, I think he's also getting more on Malobar mm. as time goes by. 
A lot, yeah. Yeah. Um, he gets way more into high art to combine with mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, something like the human voice, especially, is that's just mm -hmm. the woman looks like she's an art collector. Yeah. The way everything is designed, stuff like that, it's become way more uh, tight. Like uh, Bobert is still very like uh, jumbled up with everywhere there are tiny pictures on the wall, stuff like that. It feels more natural. Could mm -hmm. have been a TV set. Yeah. It's dressed up a bit differently, a bit mm -hmm. more in his personal liking and personal style, but it might have been a TV set. Do you think it was that way because he was depicting people's homes? So that's what was the point? Maybe. He wanted it to look very... Because I don't I know do if he used a I real house or not. I do think that by now they look even more stylized, even when he's showing, like mm -hmm. in Dolore Gloria, when he's showing his mother. Yeah. Basically, well, someone was based on his mother. Mm -hmm. um, it still looks very much more like something you would do now. Yeah. Let's say. Like, the more popular he's become, the more um, artful mm -hmm. everything looks in his movies. There's definitely a style now that. Even uh, recently, I was just talking to a friend about taking a picture, and we used him as an adjective. Yeah. Like, we'll do it very Almodovar, we'll make yeah. it very, like, popping colors, uh, yeah. I don't know, like a yellow apron with some red gloves, yeah. and, uh, you know, a, a, a printed background. Mm -hmm. There's nothing simple, everything has to, have, has to pop. Yeah. That's the thing, he doesn't choose one thing to pop, everything pops, but he does yeah. it very well. Yeah. yeah, but you're still very focused on certain things within that mm -hmm. picture, so he's still a very good filmmaker, even yeah. though it's quite loud in a way. He's very loud, yeah, it's very saturated. That's, that's always the thing that comes to mind. Just yeah. It's what I said at the beginning, he's just turned mm -hmm. saturation up a little yeah. bit. <laughs> Personality-wise, clothing-wise, just everything in, yeah. in his movies is just loud and we're here. Yeah. <laughs> You said you were going to talk about things that annoyed you this time around, and I think you've only mentioned one thing yet. That's so, true, that's yeah. true. I think what also annoyed me the first time, it was the same thing, I think also because I didn't know the backstory, but like the daughter, you know, the, the father's looking at her underwear, mm -hmm. and he actually focused like in the skirt, and I'm like, those are the things that always annoy me, like you have to show somebody taking a shit, you have to show, like yeah. you have to literally, you know, um, focus on that. Reinforce um, the male gaze in some ways? Yeah. But those were just the things that it was like, come on, man, can't you do it in a different way? Can you try be more artistic about it? Yeah. <laughs> those are the things, and I know what he's doing, and I get why he's doing it, but I think because of Spanish TV being so over-sexualized, yeah. um, those are always the things that kind of take me out of the picture a little bit. Like, ah, oh, yeah. here we go. Seen that before. Yeah. That's we don't need to go there again. Exactly. But it could be also that people just started copying so much mm -hmm. that now you watch him and you go, oh, he's doing that. But he probably started it. <laughs> yeah. Which is a problem as well. Yeah. You have to reinvent yourself because other people have copied you so much. I've become, well, uh, I've mentioned his name before, but Wes Anderson, mm -hmm. uh, his movies, they're becoming more and more copied. Yeah. Sometimes by people who just... <laughs> They just see the surface of it and mm -hmm, think if mm -hmm. we can copy the surface, then we get there. And yeah. it's just annoying. But also, in the same time, Wes Anderson has become more Wes Anderson yeah. all the time as well. So that's I also love Wes an interesting. Anderson. <laughs> I do too. It's like watching a painting. <laughs> yeah, great. exactly. Yeah. But yeah. he's never made a more Wes Anderson film than The Grand Budapest Hotel. Mm -hmm. And now with um, The French Dispatch, he might be going even further in that. I haven't seen it yet, but I can't wait. But let's get back to Volver. Literally, yeah. Volver means to go back to. Yeah. So, full circle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More things that annoyed me. Um, I can also talk about what annoyed me the first time and what I actually loved the second time around. For example, uh, at the beginning where all the women are cleaning the tombstones yeah. and the intro. Um, I also, I, I had, a, um, my parents are both atheists. Yeah. I grew up atheist and I had hatred for religion. <laughs> right. It's very, Catholicism is everywhere in Spain. Yeah. Um, and I remember the first time I was like, oh, there they go again with the thing and the church and the religion and blah, 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 blah. And then the second time around, I think also when you're 20, you've lost less people in your life and you're like, it's bullshit. They're dead. They're in the ground. Who gives a shit? Yeah. And then the next time around, it was like all teary eyed, like, oh, you yeah, know, it could be my grandma. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then you understand why they're putting this passion into keeping this clean. It's their pride and joy. Yeah. I think it was just a general 
exaggeration of Spain the first time that just annoyed me. Yeah. Um, you know, the, oh, she's going to cook and she's going to sing. and uh, But then, of course, we do cook and yeah. we do sing and we do get together and we do overfeed everybody and we do yeah. drink. And, and it's true, we do do that. <laughs> Obviously, we don't cook like a... So it's just that the truth hurts the first time. Yes, that's exactly. <laughs> I think that would be the perfect description of why I didn't like it the first time. The truth hurts. <laughs> This is a caricature. Yeah, but it's a caricature of your face. Yeah. Oh, fuck off. And you do have a big nose. <laughs> das war ein Befehl. Der Angriff Steiner war ein Befehl. Wer sind Sie, dass Sie es wagen, sich meinen Befehlen zu widersetzen? So weit ist es also gekommen. If you stop to think about it, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, these are people who do quite terrible things. Mm -hmm. Paula murders a guy. Yep. Mother helps her cover it up. Mm -hmm. Turns out her mum killed her husband and her and his lover. Yeah. And also started a fire which caused a lot of more people to die. Yeah. And the woman that she murders is a friend's mother that yeah. was actually cheating on her friend with her husband. Yeah. These are these are objectively bad people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. In a way, but it's still, way. still, it is quite interesting how it, you do get, well, you feel for them, a mm -hmm. family of killers and avenging angels, basically. Yep. You do, indeed. It, 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 that's the thing, when you, when you find out what's happened, you go, well, of course. Also, also because, fine. yeah, but also the, yeah, the backgrounds, they, mm -hmm. they make sure that you do understand why they do what they do. And in the end, you're actually quite, you actually quite, you think that what Irene is doing for uh, Augustina, mm -hmm. uh, staying in her home even though she killed her mum. <laughs> <laughs> but she's going to take care of her while she has cancer, like yeah. she did for her sister Paula. And it actually feels quite nice. It makes sense. Sort of. Yeah, in a way you're like, that's, that's a really nice thing to do, you know. Yeah, it's not really a redemption, but mm -hmm. still it's better than just not doing it and maybe they'll have a conversation about mm -hmm. the stuff because she can finally show herself to Augustina yeah yeah I, I when I first saw her hiding around I was like this is so stupid but yeah. then you see the little old lady with the glasses and you're like oh it kind of makes sense she yeah. wants to help her because she's just you know so fragile yeah um, and then you're like, well, of course she's going to help the next person that's six. That that is now her job. She is a, yeah. a ghost in inverted commas yeah. that that is just going to help people yeah. that are alone in a village, which is very sad. You know, you've lived all your life, you've taken care of your whole family, and now just yeah. there on your own. Um, but yeah, like when when uh, she says wh why she left the village, the I just forgot the name of the protagonist. Penelope Cruz is Raimunda. Raimunda, and mm -hmm. she says why she left home. And what happened and everything? You're like, of course, it all makes sense. Yeah. You do feel for them, and you you want them to. You want you're rooting for them for them to be happy and to do well. Yeah. And they are murderers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. I do wonder why Paco wouldn't. Well, okay, so maybe of course, uh, young Paula, she's coming of age, and mm -hmm. so maybe before he has not noticed her mm -hmm. as much until she's fourteen, but. He probably would have been a shit all those 14 years. Yeah, that is something. They, they make it... He, he's not in the movie for very long. No. And he's shit for the five minutes that you see him. Yeah. This can't be a surprise. No. So why does it happen now? That is, that is the only thing I think that's missing there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it makes more sense... It would have made more sense for me for Raimunda to kill him than the daughter. Yeah. I think... Because I remembered... But I do like think that. that because uh, Paula does it, that you're more inclined to think, oh, she doesn't deserve to have her life destroyed yet. She yeah. seems like an okay person. It's not her fault. He was a shit. Yeah, that's true. If, if it's it, easier if to go along with you... this than with. <laughs> that's <laughs> a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> How fitting. There's no one, no one in the house. <laughs> almost had a heart attack <laughs> <laughs> but I guess that would come to a shock as a shock to anybody if suddenly your father says I'm not your father yeah 
and then tries to basically rape you in your own kitchen. Yeah. I, I think that would make me very upset too. Yeah, I, I also didn't remember, like, did she think he was his father or not about that? She yeah. did. Yeah. She yeah, did think he was I did, his father, I do, right? I do remember now, but just when I was watching the movie, yeah. I just didn't... It felt like he was a stepdad and then he, mm-hmm. from very early on. Just when he's ogling her, I just re- just thought, well... Mm-hmm. Ah, so Omodoba invented stepdad porn, which is... <laughs> yeah, it's accurate. <laughs> it can't be easy to say your dad's your granddad. I mean, no. There's not a day where you're just having lunch and you go, by the way, yeah. you know, granddad... <laughs> He's also dad. (laughs) When um, the party is going on with the film people and um, before you get the talk between Raimunda and Paula, Mm -hmm. like, uh, uh, I don't want to go to the restaurant now, I know that he's in the fridge and uh, mum says, well, you do need to work, (laughs) something like that. And then afterwards she is at the party and you see her hand on, I think, mm-hmm. she has had the fastest perm in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As curly-haired people, we know that's not true. <laughs> Those are the little things as well that have always annoyed me. Like, Raimunda is clearly very attractive. Mm-hmm. For somebody that, you know, works a lot, is quite broke, yeah. doesn't have a lot of time for anything, and she's got a banging body, like... It takes work. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. The only thing fake about how she looks in the movie is that uh, Amadobo uh, made her wear a false ass because uh, he said women <laughs> like that tend to have wider hips than Penelope Cruz does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was just one point where she's... Uh, and this, this always takes me out of it as well. Like, they go to the village and they've made them the food and they're eating these uh, cream-filled whatever. Yeah. And she's just kind of nibbling at it. And it's like, you do not eat that. You don't <laughs> even touch those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is pure fat, deep-fried, yeah. cream inside, sugar-glazed. <laughs> You've never had one in your life. <laughs> she does look... I mean, it's not really a criticism either, but she she looks like a movie star. So it's, yeah. And the, the other actors aren't as attractive, and I think he picks them people that look more human, mm-hmm. and where she really stands out. Yeah. But of course, there is, there's always women that are super attractive yeah. that are just walking around. That's true, yeah. but it's also a nod to mm-hmm. uh, Italian neorealist movies mm-hmm. where you had people like Claudia Cardinale and yeah. uh, Sofia Loren yeah. walking around. Yeah, like they just, that's what they do. They go yeah. buy bread. The fact that the mother, to protect her family and everyone around her, would rather not see her, them and not talk to them. Yeah. So they're not affected by what she did is incredible. It's like, you would think, I probably would have like come out and say, hey, here yeah. <laughs> and that shows so much more love and um, one of my favourite parts when they when they said no it was mum all along that was making the food for us she was making our favourite dish and she yeah. was putting two there exactly for us yeah exactly like that was her little way of, of showing them that you know I'm still here and I, I'm yeah, still, still taking care of you yeah. yeah I thought that was really sweet yeah mm. and that old lady with the glasses by the way she's you know Spain's grandmother Right, um, yeah. she's a really well-known actress. She's so good. I don't know, I think she passed away. Okay. But she did um, an ad, once a year they do this ad, and she was in it one year. And, <laughs> and I remember just crying, because she's just so good, and she just plays the nan, and the, I think people aren't coming home for Christmas or something, and she gets right. upset. Yeah. And it's an ad for, for ham, for cured ham. <laughs> <laughs> Every year they do one and they always make everyone cry. Oh. And they use this old lady and she's got these big glasses and she's so tiny. <laughs> oh. Yeah. You'd actually quite enjoy the, the ad. It's always done by a good director and it's very well shot and everything. There was a, a, an element to mm-hmm. re-watching the movie and thinking, well, as good as it is in many ways, it also is... It sticks to the surface in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. It is a very superficial movie, done really well. Yeah. When it comes to that, but I have way less notes than I usually have when I'm watching a movie mm-hmm. because it just more more than in other movies, it just washed over me. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's. I think it's very beautifully made. I think I agree with that. There's yeah. there's a there's a plot. It's interesting in the end. You go, oh right. But it doesn't stay with you a lot. It's not a movie that you would tell anyone to watch either, I think. 
Were you it mind used to be very not? popular at the time. Mm-hmm. It was a really big hit also, I think, in, mm-hmm. uh, in Nijmegen around that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, amongst friends and stuff like that who were speaking of, where do we want to go to? And this was one that was, mm-hmm. was named a lot back then. It was named when it came out, I guess, but it's not one of those movies maybe now that people would recommend as much. Right? No, I, w- I wouldn't think that. It has a very long, mm. enduring thing. And also with uh, Amadoba, um over the years, I sort of have developed this feeling like a uh, new Elmodoba is coming out. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of a requisite thing to go watch, but... It's like Star Wars. You have to see it, but you don't... I don't love them. No, I, I really enjoy them once I watch them. <laughs> That's the thing. They do creep up on me when I watch them. I think, oh, yeah. this is actually really good. I actually really enjoyed watching this. Mm-hmm. Especially recently, uh, Delore Gloria. Yeah, maybe that is... Like a comfy jumper or something is that kind of thing that you don't appreciate yeah. too much, but then you really, really, really like, uh, and it's just nice to watch. Um, you know that it's going to have you know good actors in it. Yeah, but I know what you mean because I also when I hear there's a new one, I'm not excited. Yeah. But then I watched World Bed and I was like, oh, this is this is great. Like, yeah. what am I doing? Yeah. Yeah. But also it's fleeting in a way. Hmm. Yeah, like I guess popcorn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, you enjoy it for a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't recommend a lot of Amor. But I recommend Alex de la Iglesia to everybody. Mm-hmm. He's my favourite Spanish director. Mm-hmm. And I'll watch El Día de la Bestia yeah. until the day I die. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I guess Amor is just a nice movie to watch. What's on next? <laughs> yeah. the, the dude who plays uh, Paco in uh, Volver. Yeah. I especially know him from another... Uh, Iglesias movie. Yeah, he's in, in Ballade Triste de Trompeta. Yeah, I haven't seen that. Fuck, one, that movie is nuts. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I don't know how I haven't seen it because <laughs> I've recently watched Alex Ale Iglesias' TV show. Okay. He's got a TV show called Trenta Monedas. Okay. And it's great. It's about a priest that's like boxes and has tattoos and he's really hard and he smokes and everything. And then he gets to this village and all this stuff starts happening. And in okay. each episode, there's a different thing. And uh, it's also insane. It's just absolutely yeah. fucking crazy. I'm just going to say it. Put this out there. You haven't yeah. had the word priest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but a boxing priest with tattoos and, cig- and smoking cigars. Oh, wow. It's just great. He's yeah. such a good actor. He's like, he always looks hungover as well. He's got a <laughs> beard on him. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you'll like it. Trenta Monedas. They, they yeah. can both do some really disturbing things with their plots. Yeah. They should... They should work together. <laughs> <laughs> that could be good. Penelope Cruz is shooting some zombies. <laughs> For <laughs> With her grandmother. <laughs> yeah. I would watch that 100%. I would, I would watch the shit out of that. <laughs> yeah, watch it right now. They should just make it. <laughs> it was actually really, really nice to rewatch. So I'm glad you, you asked me. All right. Because I never would have rewatched it, and I would just kept telling everybody it's absolute garbage. <laughs> so at least now, if they ask, I'll go. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my take on it. It's yeah, fine. It's, it's a fine. good movie. It's... Still, I'm going to have to ask you. Well, oh, yeah. if, if you you uh, would want to make improvements on the, on the mm-hmm. film, what would you do to improve it? Improvement does you. And I specifically yeah. asked you this time, how would you de Almodovar it? <laughs> I would turn down the red saturation of the reds. <laughs> Do you dislike like that? Uh, no, I'm joking about that part. Okay. But um, it's what I've said. Oh before, shit! I've right? made it serious. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would just tone down what I said already. It's like, come on, mate. Like, why do you have to focus on the crotch of a 14 year old? Yeah. Why do we have to watch a piss? Uh, just the standard ones like that, and. And glorifying the main character so much. Mm-hmm. Give a little bit to the others. Why does the sister have to be yeah. so sad? So shit. <laughs> like, could the sister not be able to sing? That would be my, my yeah. take. He always has one main character that is... Uh, and I know... I, I did feel smaller. like if, if, the, the thing that makes most clear mm-hmm. that this is a movie from 2000s that you see Penelope Cruz and Lola Duenas in one movie. Mm-hmm. That's just that decade. Yeah, of Spanish films. <laughs> True. Well, we've got like six Spanish actors. That's another thing with Spanish movies <laughs> is that in the end you're like, oh, this, yeah, this person again. Yeah, um, Nora Duenas is mostly just cast to be that sort of a character, <laughs> a bit demure. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, well, there's some, I guess you have the same in the Netherlands, but there's some actors that have one role. Yeah. And that's all they do. And they, mm. they drag them out every now and then and they do the one one liner or the one thing. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas spinning up has done a bit of everything. Oh yeah, my my Almodovar to di Almodovar. That's very difficult to say, by the way. Yeah. Di Almodovar fi yeah. would be to cut out a little bit of the sexual part and the graphic parts a bit. Yeah. He does that a lot. Um, I don't know if he's getting better or not. And he just just make everybody as real. Um, like make make the main characters real as everybody else in the movie. Yeah. Because the mother, the sister, everybody's some that someone that you can approach and you can imagine that you know. That's like a slice yeah. of life. Yeah. Except for the main character, it's like yeah. she's too perfect. <laughs> Just give her a broken tooth. <laughs> <laughs> Knock it out yourself. You have to. Yeah. Brad Pitt did it in the Fight Club. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and you had another question as well. About movies, I think. Or Recommendations. Yes. Yeah. Tip one. One of them was uh, Virgin Suicides. Yeah. By Sofia Coppola. Yeah. I really like that one. And again, she hit the scene running. That one was very good. That was her first movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think I thought of that one because we were we were talking about Volver, and again, it's a really good movie about literal sisterhood. Yeah. And and I love how she shows the bedrooms and their little life and the room decorations and the very yeah. very very slow you know pan uh with the trees and the sun such a slow movie yeah, so much is going on though the camera is like a, a bee going into a flower making love to everything yeah and it's also the girls just sitting around not doing much yeah it's all very lazy and um, the boys just being mesmerized by them yeah. in a very interesting way <laughs> Yeah, because they're mysterious and they're like, yeah. oh, there was so much about them we didn't know yeah. and we found a clip or a little sticker yeah. or... And I like uh, Kathleen Turner and James Wood as their parents as well. Yes, they're so good. And also classic 2000 movie with, um, uh, what's his face? Squinty eyes. Just Hartnett. <laughs> Just Hartnett. Yeah. <laughs> Tip two. Uh, yes, uh, layer cake. Ah. By Matthew Vaughn. Yeah. Uh, quite an underrated movie. I, yeah. Not a lot of people know it. No. I, I absolutely loved it. Uh, Daniel Daniel Craig before being James Bond, being yeah. all like thin and suave and this, cool. This might have gotten in the part of James Bond. I think so, because mm. it's very James Bond-Z. Yeah. The but type of James Bond they wanted to, to have, yeah. even though then they pumped him up and made him a beast. Yeah. But yeah, in that movie, and I thought it was just amazing, and I just I, I keep telling people, have you seen this one? And hardly no one's it. I mm-hmm. don't understand why. I think yeah. it's absolutely marvelous. It does feel like a Guy Ritchie movie toned down. Mm-hmm. There's you know Guy Ritchie characters. There's a lot of like cool sentences and things that people little quips. Yeah. And very aggressive people that are very charismatic. You're like, well, you know, he's yeah. sugar shot him, but he's funny, so yeah, let him pass. But um, yeah, that one's. I still recommend everybody that one whenever I can. Um, yeah, it's it's like Guy Ritchie, but with a bit of restraint. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like and maybe more filmmaking chops. So good. Mm. I rewatched it and I thought maybe I won't like it. Yeah. And again, I was like, it's so great, and I still quote the uh, even to people that I'm not talking about the movie when it's like, ah, oh, work sucks and this, and I'm like, well, you know. You eat shit, <laughs> and then you you get a lot higher. You eat less shit until one day you're in the rare environment where you don't even know what shit tastes like. <laughs> <laughs> and most of the time, I get looked at like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" <laughs> it's my favorite quote. Tip three. And my last movie to recommend, and it's a Wes Anderson, but it's a absolute treat uh, is Isle, Isle of Dogs mm, yeah. I love that movie I every time I watch it I'm so excited I love um, the dogs being Edward Norton and yeah uh, <laughs> and uh, Bill Murray Brian Cranston and yeah. uh, Jeff Goldblum I'm not sure about Jeff Goldblum but it's oh, I just forget his name he's also um, a fantastic Mr. Fox and he's so good at um, at doing voiceover I didn't mm. expect that he... Because he did the worst Batman ever. Not George Clooney. Yes! <laughs> but he's not in Isle of Dogs, is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the main character. 
No, it's Brian Cranston. Did I well. think the whole time? <laughs> the whole time I thought it was George Clooney. And he has such a gruffy voice. <laughs> well, regardless of who it was, <laughs> I loved it. I love the stop motion. I love the little dog's cough. Um, and, and it's actually, it gets really sad. Mm-hmm. And... And just the boy is, you know, it's great. It's just a boy looking for his dog and it's just a yeah. great premise for a movie. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, Wes Anderson. Yeah. And there's a little sweetness to it then. Yeah. 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 And, the, and there's a lot of evil in it as well. Exactly. And, yeah. And yeah. I actually looked it up. Uh, of course, as usual, it means way more than what I thought it was. It's not just a boy looking for his dog. It's about getting rid of people, immigrants and everything. And I'm like, yeah. oh, it makes the movie actually it makes a lot of sense yeah they made a movie about that and not just a boy looking for his dog yeah. <laughs> but it's that as well and that makes yeah, it more charming yeah 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 and also if you watch it as a you know if you're younger and you don't know anything else it's also a good movie that's what I like yeah yeah maybe get you into other mm-hmm. stuff as well yeah more complicated sure. stuff shows you what movies can be I think mm-hmm. yeah I think so um, because you see the hatred of one person towards dogs without understanding yeah and then you could translate that to to anything else like why would you know you can yeah. be with that it can be with people as well yeah yeah I remember reading um, The Farm when I was a kid as well mm-hmm. and I just thought it was a book about animals yeah taking over a farm oh you mean Animal Farm Animal Farm yeah, yeah, yeah. and and then eventually I grew up and then and someone was like but did you understand it I'm like yeah the pigs take over yeah and the other animals are upset it's like do you know what it actually means? I'm like, clearly not. <laughs> <laughs> and then I reread it when I knew that. And then there's a different layer to it. And I think yeah. that's very interesting. Exactly. Yeah. Just a hint. Snowball is Trotsky. <laughs> Just a hint. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I had, uh, and I have a, an extra one. Tip three and a half. <laughs> Another one of my absolute favourites, also 2000, is High Fidelity. Oh, yeah. John Cusack owns a record store. I think that's one of the easy watching art house movies mm-hmm. that I watched the shit out of because yes. it was that great. I've rewatched watching. it so many times. Yeah. I, I think I rewatched it this year or last year. And then I introduced it to a friend who was going through a breakup and then he became obsessed with it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. It's such a, it's such a good anti rom com. It's the that. opposite, yeah. And it's very much white man being sad and yeah. feeling very sorry for himself, and that could be constrained as, mm-hmm. do we need to have more movies about that? But in this case, I would go, yeah, it's quite good. Yeah, and he owns a record store, and yeah. Jack Black is there, yeah. and and uh, he meets a bunch of cool women, and they're all awesome, and yeah. Catherine Thetter jones in her absolute prime is in it, wearing cool T-shirts. Yeah. It's just great, and he's got vinyl, and he wears uh, Adidas classics. Yeah. <laughs> and, and a messenger to, bag. It's just and, everything about it is good. And to tie back into uh, The Virgin Suicides, mm-hmm. uh, Jack Black's band is called Kathleen Turner Overdrive. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it ends up going together. And so we fought and we battled as we beat each other up. Both of us tried hard. As they say, is that. Thank you so much for listening. And thanks again to Roxy for making me feel welcome there in Amsterdam and talking with me about this beloved filmmaker, Pedro Almodobar. Also, I'm sorry for making you suddenly like this movie. Anyway, are there things that I have seen the last couple of weeks that I might be able to recommend? Of course, because one of the things I saw 
is The French Dispatch, the newest movie by Wes Anderson. Now, I have been a fan of his ever since I first saw Rushmore, I think about 2000, uh, right before uh, The Royal Tenenbaums uh, was announced. Let's just say I'm easily pleased. Now, as you may already have heard, in this movie, Wes Anderson goes full Wes Anderson. So expect a lot of design, a lot of matter-of-fact dialogue, and also a lot of charming weirdness. It is an anthology movie which combines a couple of short stories, and that maybe makes it a bit more easily digestible. But still, no matter how much Wes Anderson seems to lose himself in all the little details, every time, every movie, he seems to bring something that gets to me emotionally, and he does again in this movie. There's an interchange between Jeffrey Wright's character and Stephen Park's character, followed by one between Wright and uh, Bill Murray, and the combination of them is just, just, just fantastic. I also saw The Color of Money by Martin Scorsese. Now, that's an interesting one. If you want to see young Tom Cruise be as arrogant as he can be and play some fantastic goddamn pool, this is the movie to watch. Also with a fantastic role by Paul Newman, who won the Oscar for it. It's also a sequel to Newman's 1960s film The Hustler, also a recommendation. It is one of his more entertaining movies, but still, Martin Scorsese does a lot of things which are amazing in this movie. Anyway, The Color of Money, watch it. This was a cinema production, presented and edited by me, Ruud, the 20e Eeuwse Vos. The jingles are by the genius who is known by the name Roy Grutters. Thumb Wrestling is made possible by its patrons, and those are Casey the Great, Onno Lubbers, Nils Timmer, Sine Martijn, and a new one. Welcome, Martijn van Kolwijk. If you also want to support us, please visit patreon.com slash duimpjeworstelen. Also, you can find us on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, and also on Letterboxd. Yes, we have HQ status. Wow. And if you want to send us an email, do so at duimpjeworstelen, sorry Dutch word, at gmail.com. See you again in two weeks with the Dutch episode. Bye-bye. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, could we have an enormous round of applause, please, for our host, who has once again succeeded in bringing to us a plethora of top-notch, cinematographically-themed entertainment. We have had an absolute ball, have we not? Next time on Thumb Wrestling. Next time on Thumb Wrestling. Los van of die aantrekkelijk is... Hij is gewoon mooi, hij heeft zo'n mooi hoofd. Hij heeft een heel charismatisch uiterlijk vooral. Ja, het kan ook uh, te mooi zijn. Daarom vind ik het goed dat het benoemd wordt. <laughs> Want daar had ik problemen mee. Ja? Ja, dat, daar had ik uh, problemen mee kunnen hebben. Als ze niet heel even hadden gezegd van... Uh, vroeger was je zo'n mooie jongen, maar nu ben je saai. Of ja. iets dergelijks. This podcast employs a strict only like and subscribe if you really want to. Oké, okay, bye.